Think about it. How many electronic devices have you personally owned since your first? For me, the number is 13. I love my phone and other devices such as my laptop, TV, and my iPad. They keep me connected to my friends, my social network, and the world at large. I have practically grown up with a device since birth. Now, I was born in 2009, and before I was a year old, I received my first iPad for Christmas. When I was two, I received a Hello Kitty TV DVD combo, and by the time I was three, I had broken my first iPad and inherited two passed down from my parents after they had upgraded theirs. The following Christmas, I received a different brand of tablet. Now, that may sound a little excessive, but that is five electronic devices that I personally used before the age of four. Did you know that according to Deloitte's Mobile Connectivity Trends Survey 2021, that the average US household holds over 25 connected devices and more than two TVs? So that begs the question, what happens to all of this stuff after it breaks? Well, there's a name for it. E-waste. E-waste, or electronic waste, the afterlife of our cell phones, laptop, tablets, and other consumer electronic devices after they've been tossed in the trash. And as you've probably guessed by now, there is a lot of it. According to the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, the federal agency in charge of development and enforcement of environmental regulation states that e-waste is the fastest growing waste problem in the entire world. People generate over 50 million tons of this waste every single year, which is equivalent to throwing away 1,000 laptops every second and is approximately worth 300,000 to 3 million US dollars. Now, when I was four years old, I wasn't really worried about e-waste. I was more worried about not dropping my iPad and breaking it again. But by the time I was six, I was a Girl Scout daisy, learning about all the ways I can make the world a better place. As a matter of fact, one day in March 2015, I was driving home in the car with my mom, who also happened to be my troop leader. We were both thinking hard about the lesson that we had learned that day in our meeting. The topic of the day was using resources wisely. We learned about recycling paper and plastic, but as my tiny year old as my tiny six-year-old hands gripped my iPad, a thought popped into my head. Where do all the old iPads go when they break? Where do you keep your old electronics? My mom answered my question by telling me that we normally just shove this stuff into a kitchen drawer in our home, where eventually that drawer would get full and we would just throw these devices in the trash. They would ultimately end up in a landfill. Who knows what a landfill is, with a show of hands. A landfill is a large mound of dirt and trash churned into the earth to help the decomposition of the waste. And that's when I had the thought that would change my life. Was I the only one thinking about this issue? Was anybody else doing anything to stop this? Unfortunately, the answer was no. That moment was the beginning of eTreasure Incorporated. eTreasure Incorporated is the 501c3 nonprofit charitable organization that I started off of the idea that rather than throwing our consumer electronic devices away, we can recycle, refurbish, and redistribute these devices back into our community and keep our environment free of e-waste. I immediately went to work. First, I purchased some large plastic bins to begin collecting e-waste. I started collection drives at my school and other schools around the area. Second, 
my mom helped me create a Facebook page and website, and we started asking everyone I knew to donate their old, broken, and unwanted electronic devices to the collection drives that I was hosting. At first, I was even surprised to see that a lot of the devices I was collecting were not even that old. Did you know that according to CEO Today, the average cell phone user in the US upgrades their cell phone every 22 months? I mean, you know the drill. The newest, fanciest cell phone comes out and people start lining up for the upgrade. But my collection drive was a huge success. I collected computers, printers, TVs. I think I even collected an old school alarm clock. But all sorts of electronics, you name it, I collected it. The next step was to sort these electronics. I first put all the phones in one bin, all the laptops and computers into another, and so on. The next step was to log these items. I made sure to log the brand and weight of each of the items that I collected to carefully track my progress. Now, the most commonly question that I'm asked by donors is, you're going to erase all of my personal information off of this, right? Well, the answer is yes. But I began researching certified electronics recyclers in my area. The EPA's list of certified electronics recyclers includes only the most responsible recyclers in charge of managing unwanted e-waste. This includes erasing any and all personal information that may be left on these devices by first isolating all hard drives and cell phones into a scrub room before being sent out for dismantling and recycling of these electronics. Now, our beloved consumer electronics contain poisonous amounts of chemicals and minerals. This may not be harmful to me and you as consumers, but it is very harmful to the people who are recycling these. And this is happening all over the world right now. According to the UN, a cathode ray tube TV, the type of TVs used before flat screens were invented, can contain up to eight pounds of lead. According to the Washington Post, The Guardian, CNN, and many other news outlets, wealthy industrialized nations, specifically in North America and Europe, are illegally shipping their unwanted e-waste to impoverished nations around the world, such as Ghana, Nigeria, and parts of China, India, and Pakistan. In Ghana's capital city, which used to be a lush mangrove swamp, is now home to one of the world's largest e-waste dumps. Every single day, young workers wade through the sea of electronics, searching for gold, copper, and other minerals that they can melt down and sell. The plastic sheath on wires is often burned off, causing a putrid, toxic cloud above these dumps. The World Health Organization has made a global call for help to stop this global health crisis, as over 18 million children are actively working in or living near these dump sites. Young children are often preferred in e-waste recycling because their small hands can pick out the minerals in these devices much easier than mine and yours. Even if the child is healthy, the pollution that this waste is causing to our air, ground, and water supplies can permanently damage their organs and overall personal development. Now, ever since I started eTreasure Incorporated, my goal has always been to make a measurable impact on the environment. That is why I started the eTreasure School Leaders Program to encourage students to start collection drives at their own schools while earning their required service hours. And you can do it too. Since eTreasure has been a part of my life since I was just six years old, 
I do not think the work that I do and the work that we can do together has ever been more important than it is now. The COVID-19 pandemic shined a light on the digital divide. The digital divide is the socioeconomic gap between the population's unequal access to digital connectivity. According to research at Stanford University, over 11 million students in the US go without a device for online learning. Technology changes the educational experience for a student and makes them feel connected and empowered as they learn. By turning e-trash into e-treasure, we can create a world where digital connectivity is the norm and all students have access to the devices that they need to learn and thrive. So, the next time that you glance down at your tablet, you power on your computer, and you turn on your TV, I ask you to think to yourself, are you going to throw this device away when you no longer want or need it? Or will you turn your very own e-trash into an e-treasure that can possibly be rediscovered and change a life? By working together, we can help the community and save our planet. Thank you.